time she is elevated and yay, iconically bad. Am I gonna fab it? Nah. Hello, my beautiful light brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Before we get into the episode, I just want to say a big shout out and a big thank you to all of those people that have subscribed. I finally hit a thousand subscribers, so I'm so excited. I'm one step closer to actually getting paid on this journey. My next milestone is hitting that 4,000 watch hours. So do me a favor, watch this video to the end. And then after that, go watch another one of my videos. It's called binge viewing and I approve it. But enough about that, let's get back into this episode. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race UK vs. The World Season 2, Episode 5, and let you know which looks are fab and fabulous and drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned till the end, where I let you know which queens had my best and worst looks of the week. This week on the runway, the theme is When I Glow Up. The queens must reinterpret an old look they had done on their previous season, but give it a glow up. Give us the 2.0 version of these iconically horrible looks that they've done on past seasons. Let's show us how you've grown as a queen. I love this idea. I mean, this is why we watch an All-Stars edition or a Versus the World edition. We want to see what these queens have been up to. So this is the perfect task for that. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, it's Tia Coffee, And Tia Coffee is giving us a reinterpretation of her prehistoric runway uh, where she influentially did a pterodactyl that looked like a pigeon that she went home in. But she decided that she is going to give you the 2.0 next level version and mama did she ever. She's coming in wearing this nude illusion bodysuit that is sort of crystallized to the gods. It is definitely giving you that skin tone but making it a little bit more drag. She's giving you this giant hair that is definitely giving you creature but also giving you fashion but also giving you like just really good drag to be honest. And on top of it, she decided, you know what? That's not enough. I am gonna give you some mechanical wings to go with it. So as she walks down the runway, they move, they twirl, and this is a really next level. She said, you want me to step up my I am stepping up my Personally, this is everything I wanted from this runway. She comes out, she's coming out with a bang. It is so well put together and so well thought through. The, her body looks great, her body suit looks great, and I love her hair. And honestly, it's so good that she didn't even need the mechanical wings. I mean, she needed wings, but they didn't need to be mechanical. That being said, I love that she even went there. She said, I am not leaving no leaf unturned. I am gonna give you everything that it should have been, and that she did. All in all, this is spectacular, this is incredible, and it is 100% gonna be a fuck from me. Next up, it's Scarlet Envy, and Scarlet Envy is giving you a reinterpretation of her Halloween ball look. That is right, this is a monster I like to freak. She's coming out as this weird monster from the lagoon. This time she is elevated and yay! She's coming onto this runway wearing this uh, rhinestone to death little creature attire. She's got the sequins on the body. She's got the corseted top. She's got the creature head and it is all amazing. She said that I'm gonna give you Halloween but I'm gonna give you glamour Halloween. I'm gonna give you creature but I'm gonna make it drag and I love every minute of it. This is not at all what I expected from Scarlet Envy, but this is a gorgeous version of Scarlet Envy and I'm loving it. At this stage of the game, we need to switch it up a little bit and switch it up, she did. Mama, I love it. Honestly, I just keep saying I love it because I have nothing else to say, but I love it. So that's it. If you had a guess, it's gonna be a mom. Next up, it's Hannah Conda. And Hannah Conda is revisiting her belts, buckles, and chains runway. And this time she's going a little bit different and giving you a biker gal. But she's not any biker. She said that she is Dykes on Bikes. For those of you who do not know, Dykes on Bikes is a charity in Australia 
who helped gay men get home from the clubs so that they wouldn't get harassed on the streets, especially during the AIDS crisis. First up, I will say that I didn't necessarily know about Dykes on Bikes or that that was what she was channeling. I just thought she was being like this sort of biker gal and that was enough for me. But then once you add the story on top of it, it adds just a little bit of extra zhuzh, which I love. And you can see that because she got the rainbow in her hair and she's got the rainbow on her back. But let's talk about the garment. It is definitely giving you a biker gal. It is definitely giving you bikes, chains, and buckles. So it is definitely fitting the theme and definitely bringing it into a new, new direction. I love this interpretation better than her original one. She's definitely leveled it up. Now, it seems like the judges don't really love it and I don't know why. The one thing I will say about Hanaconda is that comparative to the first two outfits, it does feel a little bit plain. And that's the problem with going third. It had this gone a little bit later after some of these other outfits that are coming up, it probably would have looked a lot better. All in all, this is pretty good, but I wish she would have taken it up an extra notch. She said she's a biker gal, so I would have loved to see some of that biker in her. Why not do the, was it Mugler who did the, like the biker corset thing that also Jimbo reinterpreted? I feel like some of that in here would have really gone a long way. I definitely think it's a great outfit and definitely something I would 100% wear. All in all, pretty excellent and definitely gonna get a up. Next up, it's Gothy Kendall, and Gothy Kendall is doing a reinterpretation of her Queen Elizabeth look. Now, I will say that Gothy only had two looks to choose from, so her options were limited. But honestly, I would have went with the other look, which I believe was this tiger thing. The reason I say this is that Queen Elizabeth is a hard look to do, and a hard look to do and make it special, because you're always gonna look quite the same, there's only so much you can really do to it. That's what this suffers from. Gothi's original look of the tiger was so iconic, iconically bad, that she's become known for it. And so seeing a reinterpretation of that, I would have been so iconically good. But she went with Queen Elizabeth, so we have to go with Queen Elizabeth. She comes out wearing this big long dress with this hair and this crown, and she is definitely giving you the Queen Elizabeth vibes. It definitely feels elevated from her original look, that being said, it's not that elevated in a sense of the dress looks a million times better. There's no doubt about that. The hair and the crown look like it's the same hair and crown. Like there's nothing new that she added to it, but is there anything else she could have added to it? And that's the problem with choosing this specific category. She added a purse and got a better dress and that's pretty much about it. That's where I'm like, eh, could have been more. Just could have been more. Does she look good? Yeah. Did she meet the challenge? Yeah, am I gonna fab it? Nah, I really think that it's a little too little too late for this one. I would have wanted a lot, lot more. Hence the reason why I'm gonna go with a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Marina Summers. And Marina Summers is coming out giving you a reinterpretation of the first runway of Drag Race Philippines, which is turn over, she better don't. Girl, I don't know this theme. I didn't watch Drag Race Philippines, so this one was the hardest one for me to get behind. She says that turno is a style of Filipino a costume that is very traditional and she is giving you a modern interpretation of it. I'm thinking, mama, if this is what a traditional costume looks like, work, because I don't know what the interpretation is, but this is how it should be, and I don't even know the original because this is exquisite. I am saying that Marina has come to play. She is elevating to the gods. She said that she is channeling also the national fish, some fish I've never heard of. She is taking the drag term fish to a whole new level. And honestly, what is it with Marina and water things and fish things? She's always doing these looks, but this one is the most elegant and extravagant of them all. So she is lucky this runway came a little later in the season. It is spectacular. She's got this spike thing on her head that gives you the height. She's got the fish tail that's giving you that fish-esque. She's got the baby blue, and she just looks exquisite as she just turns her head and walks down the runway. She is definitely giving you everything we want from drag. This is exquisite and I would not change a single thing. And that is why for Marina Summers, it is 100% gonna be a ba 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 Next up, it's Theresa May, and Theresa May is coming in in a reinterpretation of her ex-Penny Hanny glow up. 
she is giving you this reinterpretation of her original look, which was this golden sort of cowboy look. When she came out, I didn't know what look she was reinterpreting. And I'm a Theresa May fan, so I was feeling like I should know this. And when they said X Penny Henny, I was like, oh, okay, I see the details, I see the hat, I see the, the gold uh, and where she made the connection. Although she definitely feels like she's glown up in this look, I feel like in doing the glow up, she stripped out all the personality out of the outfit. One of the things about Theresa May that I love is her kooky camp side to it. Yes, she wants to be that fashion doll and girl, you could be that fashion doll, but give us the reason why we love you. And I feel like she stripped all of that out of this costume. Is it a cool costume? Absolutely. It's got a lot of reflective material. It's got this gown. It's got this tiny little hat and it's got her name on the back of the jacket. So it is definitely reading cool. I just wanted a little bit more. Personally, I think she could have done uh, some additional references. I think she should have kept the fringe to call back a little bit better to her original look. And I believe in her original look, she actually threw money in the air. So I think she would have been cool if she also had that gun to give you that reference for us to know. The garment itself is excellent. It's really well made. It's really well done. I am sure she got a really great designer to make this because it looks cool. All in all, it's a great outfit, but I am missing that little va 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 voom, that little extra, that little thing that makes it a Theresa May and makes me realize what garment she was referring to. And it is for those reasons, I'm gonna have to go with a soft drab. Sorry, babes. Next up, it's La Grande Dame. And La Grande Dame is coming out in her morning after the night out glow up look. She is reinterpreting this idea she had where she is the condom, the condom from the day after. She's coming out in this a giant condom that is made out of condoms. And you can definitely see that there's a lot of work put into it. Honestly, working with this material is definitely has to have like an haute couture edge to it. And by that, I mean with haute couture, it's all hand done, hand made. And this definitely has that aesthetic into it. You can see that she was trying to go into this avant-garde look, but did she get there? In my personal opinion, Nah, this definitely still felt like a costume of a condom and not necessarily that fashion reinterpretation of it. As she was walking down this runway, I was fully expecting her to take it off and something else would happen, but she never took it off. This was the full outfit and I was kind of disappointed. La Grande Dame always does things that are super camp and fun, but also makes it super fashion. And this one just missed the mark. I could see a lot of time and effort and probably money went into making it. I just don't think it read the way she thinks it read. I almost prefer her original interpretation where she went in this like sort of latex fabric. I think that she could have stuck with that and then done something more with it. Or maybe she kept this exact outfit and then she pulled it off and then she had a latex text dress underneath. You know what I mean? Like give us a little bit more of that reference to the original. All in all, this didn't do it for me. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but for like calm down, I am going to have to go ahead and give her a drab. <laughs> Y'all, and that is it for this week's runway. What did you think of this runway? I will say that UK First The World is really turning it up and we've getting some iconic runway looks and every week they're stepping it up. I am judging these queens a lot harsher than I'm judging some of the other seasons. So what would be drab on this season would definitely be a fab had I been on another season. But we have to compare apples to apples. This is their second time around and they know what they're doing. But enough about that and let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to... La Grande Dame. I know I didn't see this one coming for myself either. I really thought La Grande Dame is an excellent queen, but this one just felt like a costume and that I couldn't get behind. So sorry to La Grande Dame, but enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to Tia 
coffee. Guys, this was a really hard one. I think Tia, Scarlett, and Marina all turned it up. I gave five stars to all of them. They were all excellent. I was really struggling to choose a favorite, but I ended up going with Tia because I felt the transformation was the biggest. I felt like this is really what was needed, and it was like so iconically bad, so then turn around and making it so iconically good. I had to give it to her. On top of it, it's got a little bit of that edginess, which I really love. Not to say that the other ones didn't, but let's just say Marina's original outfit was better than Tia's original outfit, so there was just less growth to be made. All in all, I loved all three of these, and any of them could have been my winner. So if you agree or disagree with my thoughts, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 4,000 watch hours, so after this video, do me a favor and go watch another video. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.